Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. Today's topic of this conversation is going to be absolutely nothing. I don't really have anything to talk about specifically today, so today will be a ramble fest. Uh, I'll just try to mumble along as I go. Uh, for our new viewers, we are returning from Beagle Point after having gone all the way out there on a mission to do exploration, uh, trying to increase our exobiology rank up to the elite status as well as hopefully make enough money on our way back to the bubble to buy a fleet carrier and take that out back out into the black and do exploration with that um for we do have a cycle of operations that we do typically tend to do we hop into a new system pop the discovery scanner do some fuel scooping hop into the full spectrum system scanner and then after that if there are any uh once we pop into the full spectrum system scanner we'll look for high value planets to scan and then after that if there are 15 ish bodies or less we'll go ahead and do an individual scan of each body in the system to see if there are any um, interesting biological sources to go after so that's what we're going to do here in this next little uh, setup right over there. Uh, before we continue on with the video, <clears throat> I would like to uh, remind everybody and let everybody know that we are running a GoFundMe campaign for our mother-in-law's car that got totaled by a hit and run. Liability only insurance, so there is nobody coming to the rescue to help us get her back into a car, and uh, none of us are able to really just buy her one. So uh, we're hoping to, you know, gather enough money collectively to help her get back into a super cheap car so that she can get back uh, to being self-sufficient. Uh, the link is in the description if you'd like to do a good deed. Uh, I have absolutely nothing to do with that. It's was set up by uh, my sister-in-law, so, uh, you know, it's not going to my channel or anything like that. Purely to help her get her car figured out, uh, so that's that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have a specific topic of discussion for today. I mean, I have a kind, I, I always have like various I, vague ideas in my head of things I could talk about. Uh, but for the most part, um, unless, if I don't have a significant topic that I feel like I could talk about for a long time, I'll just kind of ramble on and hopefully hope that I find something to kind of sit on for a little bit uh, so we can get through the video. I know that uh, Elite Dangerous gameplay isn't exactly the most interesting thing to watch, especially if you're not doing a bunch of combat stuff. Uh, exploration can be extremely repetitive and uh, not very fun to watch. And since I don't do video editing or time lapses to, to do time lapses and all that stuff, um, yeah, that, that's not going to be the most fun thing. So I try to do my best to carry the gameplay with my uh, narrations and topics of discussions and things like that. Um, one of the things I was kind of thinking about as a potential topic that I knew wasn't really going to have enough uh, sub here we go, biological in the top right corner of the screen, but it is an icy body and it's probably only going to be biology uh, uh, bacteria because it's only one. We want to find at least two biological sources on a body before we're going to uh, commit to going over to do to uh, do all the scanning and all that stuff. So that's that. Let's see, we have two more bodies to grab. Um, one of the topics I was thinking of was uh, the pursuit of perfection, uh, which you know, m you know, maybe I could babble on for 30 minutes, but I don't know. Um, one of the things that, uh, especially in American culture, I don't know why, but uh, we have this idea that we should be striving for perfection. Like everybody wants to have the best of the best, the perfect of the perfect, and and I've never understood that mentality because. Um, you know, while we while we have this desire to have things exactly the way we want them, and you know, without flaw and everything like that, there's something called the uh, the idea of diminishing returns or the fact of diminishing. I don't want to call it a law because I don't know if it's a law. I mean, you would, I guess you could call it the law of diminishing returns, but uh, and maybe it is. I don't know. But the point of it is, is that uh, you know, the cl the more effort you put into something, the less you end up getting out of it over time. So for you know, the closer you're trying to get to, you know, exactly whatever it is that you're trying to do, perfecting whatever it is that you're trying to perfect. Um, much like trying to attain the speed of light, the closer you get to that, the more and more time and energy and effort you have to put into it to get cl ever closer to that goal of trying to, you know, be perfect. <clears throat> um, and I think that, um, ooh, here we go. Definitely going to go to that one for, uh, for biology planet. So that's going to be a good place for us to go to uh, scan some stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people spend a lot of time or, or, and end up wasting a lot of time uh, continuing to demand and, you know, 
even of themselves or of other people demand that things be exactly the way that they want it to be and it has to be perfect and flawless and uh, there can be no issues with it um, and realistically that's just that's an unsustainable philosophy to <laughs> that's you're, you're gonna waste a lot of your life um, pursuing that level of whatever it is that you're doing if your metric for it being acceptable is it must be perfect um the reality of the situation is is that a lot of people look down on the good enough mentality and i've never really understood that because um there, there's a difference it, it, the, the the phrase good enough means that it's acceptable it means it has met the minimum requirements for whatever it is that you're trying to do and a lot of people set min uh, set the minimum requirements lower than they would like it and then get mad when people do the minimum to meet those requirements and then no more. <laughs> you see this in the job market a lot where, <coughs> excuse me, uh, employers are trying to hire you and they set a low bar trying to attract you because they don't want to scare you away. But then, you know, during the interview process, they try to drop hints and they try to suss out whether you're the kind of person that's going to go to go, quote, above and beyond uh, for the company. And all the while, you know, they, they set these expectations. And then when you get on the job, the expectations change. And what they said when you first started, when, when you were first going through the hiring process is no longer the acceptable minimum. They change it on you. And then you're kind of confused because you're like, well, I got into this job thinking that this was this was what I had to meet, and you know, you said that this was this was the acceptable minimum, so I don't understand why you have a problem with it. And I think one of the issues that we have in our culture, you know, at least American culture, anyways, is this this workaholic over overperformance, you know, kind of ridiculousness that a lot of us tend to have, especially, you know, business owners. Business owners in general, because it's their project, they think that everyone else should have because it's important that business owners believe that believe that because their project is so important to them that other people should care about it too. And they don't understand that, you know, you know, you care about it because it's yours. Every all the effort that you put into it is something that goes to benefit you directly whereas for me i'm just here to get a paycheck i'm here to do the job that i'm i, I was hired to do and no more and you know if i am if, if my work impress i i do the i do the work at a level that i find acceptable and then hopefully that it hopefully that impresses you but if it doesn't i'm not going to bend over backwards to make it happen um and you know a lot of people don't like to hear that they want you to they want you to treat their project as if it's uh, as if it's uh, as important to you as it is to them, and I, I just I, I don't know I just I don't understand how how tone deaf most employers are to think that that's the way that people are going to approach their stuff. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, hold on, wait. We need to uh, let's we can hop back in here. We need to see what we have. Fungoida, Frutexa, and Tussock. So it looks like if we go, hmm. I'm going to leave the Frutexa up, and then I'm going to try to go to the edge of one of these because we should be able to find some Tussock on the edge there. But first, I want to get around to the light side of the planet because I don't like searching for this stuff in the dark. That's not very fun. So let me get around to the side here, and we'll try to find a really nice place to land where hopefully we can find three out of the four or hopefully we can find all four but realistically we'll probably find three out of the four things here and uh, that's probably going to be it because that's usually the way it ends up ends up working out i guess we'll go over to this spot here excuse me and then uh, we'll see if we can find some stuff real quick so you know um the, it, it's easy to become delusional when you're working on your own thing that's super important to you and it's worth it to you to put all kinds of crazy amounts of effort into what you're doing because you, you, you truly enjoy what you're doing or you are building, you're hoping to build something for yourself for the future. But then you, then other people come in and they don't have the same level of commitment as you because, you know, to them it's just a job. You know, even if they're career minded, not not every career minded person is going to go into a job and say, you know what, I'm going to put in my, I'm going to put in 110 percent effort because, you know, 
I, I, my career, my career. And it's like a lot of people, especially nowadays, are really looking for that work-life balance, and nobody's got time to be sitting there doing you know uh, 80 hours a week to build up your company to make it what you want it to be for you. <laughs> <laughs> and too many businesses just don't understand that concept. And unfortunately, too many too many employees don't understand the concept that, you know, you're a little mini every each one of us is our own little mini business. Um, sorry, I'm trying to focus on not crashing here cuz I would like to land without slamming into the ground if possible. We'll go ahead and grab the bacteria since it's relatively easy to spot. Um <clears throat> Most employees don't realize that each of us is our own little mini business. Um, yeah, the, go we, the government has set things up so that we have certain protections under the law and, you know, all, all of these different things. But at, at the end of the day, you, you are responsible for your own work and your own income and your the, the, the agreements that you make with the companies you choose to apply to. Um, the company has its expectations and you should have your expectations and you guys meet somewhere in the middle in a compromise that you both find acceptable. That's the way that business works and that's the way that the employee-employer relationship actually works. It's just most employees don't realize that, you know, you, you are acting as if you're a business, you just don't realize it. You're, and you don't negotiate from a position of understanding that you just you're you're desperate for income you're desperate for this you're desperate for that and you just take whatever they give you rather than negotiating because you know you, we have this perception that uh, if I don't take this job then what am I going to do They're, they'll find somebody else and it's like well yeah maybe they'll find somebody else but at the same time if you're the best person for the job um, any business that is worth working for is going to take into account what you bring to the table and if you're bringing enough to the table that it's worth paying a little bit more for or providing a little bit more benefit to then a business is absolutely going to do that because they're always looking to hedge their bets they're always looking because it's it's as much of a risk for them to hire you oh how do we get okay can i get this one how did i get end up getting turned around back to where we were that's annoying um it's as much of a risk for an employer to hire you as it is for you to, you know, go after an uh, go after a job. I mean, like it's there's a lot of uncertainty in both on both sides of the uh, on the both sides of the fence when it comes to trying to do the whole job search thing and you know trying to trying to come to an agreement that uh, both people both sides can live with now are there companies out there that take advantage of people because they know that they're desperate and that they need this and that they need that of course there are um, and you're never going to get away from the fact that those those businesses are out there because their businesses are run by people and people suck and uh, that's just kind of the way that it is um, if you get yourself into a situation where you're working for a company that behaves that way, then you know you got to do the smart thing and find a way out of it. Find another job, find another another income source, find another thing that you're trying to do. But uh, realistically, um, regardless of whether regardless of whether a business sucks or doesn't, you need to always remember that just like that business works out deals with its customers to go do whatever it is that it's doing. You have to work out deals with your customer. Your customer is your employer. Um, you know, a lot of businesses don't like you to think about it that way because it makes it, it, it promotes this, uh, you know, servant or slave mindset where you feel beholden to the employer because they're, they're you know, they're employing you. But realistically, um, I don't think there's too many places, at least in the United States, where you can't just say, hey, you know what? I don't want to work here anymore. See y'all later. Have a nice life. Um, you know, even if a, even if your state isn't necessarily an at-will work state, you, nobody's forced, nobody can force you to stay and work at that job. Yeah, there may be some consequences for walking out, but at any given moment, you can walk into that place and say, you know what, I don't like you guys, I'm not working here anymore, and it's that easy. Um, so I, I went on that, I went on that tangent because, you know, like I said, this particular episode doesn't really have a specific theme um, other than just I'm just kind of rambling and trying to keep talking until <laughs> until uh, ideas pop into my head for things to talk about um, 
But I know I was originally talking about the pursuit of perfection, <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, we live in a world where there's just too many pe there's too many super idealistic people who have drunk their own Kool Aid enough to believe that you know because they want things to be perfect, it has to be so, and because I'm the boss, I get to decide what the uh, what the outcome of this is going to be, and it doesn't matter how many hours you have to put into it, you need to just make it happen. And it's like, well, you know what? I have a life too. I don't necessarily want to spend 60, 80 hours a week trying to make this project perfect because you think that it should be. So how about you put in that extra time to make it perfect, and I'm going to do my full-time job and then go home. But then you do that, and you get a bad reputation and all that stuff, and it's like, well, I guess, I guess that's what happens. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I don't really know what to say to that. It's easy to say, you know, screw an employer, but then there's also the unintended consequences of the things that you decide to do. If that employer decides to talk crap about you, uh, yeah, technically you could probably sue them for some kind of defamation thing or something like that. But realistically, you're not going to win that <clears throat> uh, unless you, unless you happen to have a decent amount of money already where you can hire a good lawyer. You're not winning that. <laughs> that ain't happening. Um. So I mean, it's not like I've ever been in that kind of a situation. I've been I've been pretty fortunate to work, for the most part, with people who uh, maybe I didn't like their personality or the way they went about things, but they were pretty fair with my time and they didn't really ask too much of me. Um, so this video isn't really this video isn't like the, this topic is not me complaining about situations that I've been in because to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't really been in that situation pretty much at all. Um, but I do know from, you know, horror stories that you read online that that is a thing that happens and it's something that people have to deal with. And, uh, you know, all I can say to, all I can do is just try to provide some, you know, my own insight that maybe will add to what you have to maybe figure out what it is that you're going to do and figure it out. Um, <clears throat> the reality of the situation is that um, no one person is going to have the answer for every situation in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so you're gonna you're gonna have to cast a wide net and find a bunch of different people who have a bunch of different perspectives and figure out which one resonates with you the most and which one seems like it's gonna be the best option for. Was that? Uh... Oh, one of these I thought looked different. But I guess not. For some reason, I thought I saw some some uh, plant-looking stuff that looked different than what we found so far, but it does not seem so. Because that's all for Texa. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, that's all Tussock. So we'll skim around looking for some for Texa here, but uh, I'm not feeling that good about it. It's all grassy. <clears throat> I mean, I guess for Texas, kind of grassy, but it's a little bit more... I think it has, like, flowery stuff on it. What is this? Yeah, it's all grass. Unfortunately, we get into these spots where... I'm not sure where to find things. So, yeah, I, I guess that's really all I had to say about all of that. I, I could go on for another 10 minutes rambling about how, you know, you need to treat yourself as a business and you need to understand that just because your boss wants something to be perfect does not necessarily mean that it has to be so. And <clears throat> if they're behaving, if their expectations are more than you're willing to put into their job, then you need to start looking for something else. It's just kind of the end of that story. Um... But overall, it's just, we all have to, ex we, I think it would be nice if more people understood and paid a little bit more attention to the fact that, you know, to get perfection requires way, way more effort than, you know, getting something that's good. Like, you can, you can have something that's good with a pretty reasonable amount of effort. To get something that's perfect requires an insane it requires uh, orders of magnitude more effort, more time and effort. It's just the way that it works. 
because you can get something to you know 75 80 percent with relative ease but then you start trying to put it up push up into the 90 95 you know 99 percent and you're just you're gonna ha you're gonna have to put way more effort than you did even in that first 80 percent of doing things it's just that's just how the that's just how the world works i don't know why i don't know why that's how the world works but it does all right i want to see what that was because i saw plant life that looked a little bit differently shaped but i don't know all right i think yeah that's just a rock Yep, that's just grass. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm not sure where this Frutexa is, but unfortunately, I think we're going to have to just say we're not finding it on this one. Because they were all next to each other. At least I thought they were. Try to look around for a second and see if maybe we can get because generally Frutexa and the Fungoida and that kind of stuff is going to be in the rockier areas, in the more ter heavy terrain areas. So if we can get over here and maybe find something that looks a little different, it's like yeah, that's all grass. I'm assuming that that's all grass. Yep. Crap. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I'm just not able to figure out directions that I need to be doing. Yep, it's all grass. So I think what we'll do is we'll turn off our landing gear and we'll blast over to one of these like mountain tops over here and see if maybe we can find it there. Because after once we reach past the 20 minute mark, I'm not really trying to uh, hop off of a planet and go find another one, especially when we still have two more species to grab. So I'm kind of hoping we can head over here to the mountains, maybe find some, maybe find some of what we're looking for over here. Do a little bit of surface skimming here. Try to be very careful. So the trick to doing stuff like this is just to anticipate what you're doing. If you wait too long to start changing motions, and you can always boost your way out if you feel like you're starting to get out. Like if you're if you're early enough with it, you can boost your way out of it. Because if you can change your direction into the direction you need to go, hit the boost, then a lot of times it will fix your directional. It'll fix your direction quick enough that you won't hit anything. So unfortunately, it does not look like we're going to be able to find what we're looking for. I see this stuff over here. Alright, that's going to be the Fungoida, I think. Hmm. Let's get our landing gear out and see if maybe there's a place we can land in here, but I don't know. Yeah, everything here is just so... And honestly, there's, it's just that one, so we would, a, we would A, have to land far away to come get in here, then get in here with either the SRV or on foot, then we'd have to go all the way back to our ship again, and then find another place that's going to be just like this. So, just like I said, it's more tussock, I think. 
Yep, that's fantastic. So like I said, um, perfection. This is this is an example of that. The amount of time and effort that we would have to expend to get the fungoida there is just not worth it uh, based off of the other things that have to get done today. So I'm going to just go ahead and call it. Uh, we're going to find a place to land here and end the episode. At least we got at least we got a two out of the four. It's better than nothing. It's you know still several million credits. Um, I would go out of my way for Tectonicus, but uh, not not Fungoida or the other ones. But anyways, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you did so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a member you can leave YouTube's version of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions are greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this channel into a full-time gig, which is the dream. So again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.